Bienvenidas y bienvenidos. Welcome. I call to order the interactive dialogue of the General Assembly on Harmony with Nature. I would like to welcome, welcome all of you to this meeting. This interactive dialogue is convened on the occasion of the 10th anniversary of the International Mother Earth Day and held in accordance with paragraph three of General Assembly Resolution 73 stroke 235 of the 20th of December 2018. The dialogue on the theme, Mother Earth Approach in the Implementation of Education and Climate Action, will provide a platform to discuss the contributions of harmony with nature in ensuring inclusive, equitable, and quality education on taking urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts and to inspire citizens and societies to re reconsider how they interact with the natural world in the context of sustainable development, poverty eradication, and climate justice. I would now like to welcome the authorities accompanying me today on the podium, Mrs. Cynthia Silva Maturana, Deputy Minister of Environment, Biodiversity, Climate Change, and Forest Management and Development of the of Bolivia, His Excellency um, Ambassador Sayed Akwabuddin, Permanent Representative of India, His Excellency Luis Gallegos Chiribadam. Permanent Representative of Ecuador, Mr. Tarek Artiful Islam, Deputy Permanent Representative of Bangladesh, and late and the late Bill, and Mrs. Mark Miller, organizer of the late Erie Bill of Rights in the United States. First of all, I would like to express myself and my with the people of um, Sri Lanka and the victims of the atrocious terrorist attacks which have occurred this Easter. I firmly condemn these facts. Terrorism and violence in any of its forms has no justification and cannot remain unpunished. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this interactive dialogue. This, as I already mentioned, is a very special year because we are commemorating the 10th anniversary of Resolution 73-238, whereby the GA on the, said that the 22nd of, 22nd of April would be Mother Earth Day. I would like to tell states and the other relevant actors who have worked tirelessly for this subject to be dealt with in the General Assembly and thus renew our commitment to the needs of protecting the planet and its ecosystems. Excellency, today is a day for reflection, but it's also one for commitment. Human action is dramatically changing life in the planet and Environmental deterioration is advancing. We are uh, uh, deforesting forests. We drain rivers. We are contaminating the uh, rivers, and the all of the uh, species are being killed year after year. It is calculated that since 1970, 70 percent of the vertebrate animals have disappeared. We are living a climate crisis with tem extreme temperatures and phenomena were increasingly frequent and of greater intensity, which alone in 2018 affected more than 70 million persons throughout the world, as well as the most recent, the cyclone in Palagre and in Zimbabwe. Our Mother Earth is in serious danger. We, human beings, have endangered it. It is a time to take care of it, to repair the damage, to protect and restore its vital cycles, to make sure that we protect life 
and that it can be re uh, uh, nature can be re to reproduced. Many states have recognized that nature has rights, like Ecuador, which has included it in its national constitution, while the legislation of Bolivia, for instance, has a principle of integral um, approach to Mother Earth. A decision of the Court of Justice of Colombia said that Amazonia has the same rights as a person. At the same time, in recent years, we have seen the idea that the protection of the environment and human rights are interdependent. States have to guarantee the, an environment which is healthy and sustainable to make effective full enjoyment of human rights, including the rights to life at the highest possible level of physical and mental health at a level of life which is adequate, we're ensuring food, culture, and development, and of course the right to a healthy environment, which also is covered in most of the laws at world level and in many international and regional instruments. Awakening consciousness of the right of nature to be existent, to be protected, is increasing. This is hopeful for this and for future generations. Excellency, a sustainable world which we aspire to achieve with Agenda 2030 requires that we rethink how we interact with nature. Finding a balance between the needs of the human being and the resources that Mother Earth provides us with doesn't mean that we do not waste it, but we should set aside unnecessary exploitation of these resources and build a model of development in which we respect the thresholds established by nature, its capacity for region regeneration as well as its right to exist and maintain itself. In this context, we have to redefine the relationship between the economy, society, and nature. To achieve this, it is imperative to realize that our generation is facing this and that it, we have to have a solidarity. We need urgent responses, collective action, building new compacts for just management of the common goods of mankind. There are two themes which deserve particular attention. First, Education, which is a subject which is why we are here in this dialogue, which is key to create a better, more sustainable future. Young people, girls and boys, have to acquire knowledge and skills and the necessary values to forge this future. Themes like climate change, the preservation of biodiversity, maintaining the forests and consumption and production patterns has to be part of education programs. We need that the future generations would also be res account responsible and feel that they are part of the, of the future. We also have to recognize climate change as being the existential threat of our times. The recent report of the IPCC calls upon us to make unprecedented changes at social and global levels to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees centigrade and thus avoid consequent humanitarian economic disasters. Young, as Greta Humberg, the young activist, said before the parliament, referring to the collapse of the of Notre Dame, and I quote, uh, we hope that the basis of our nature and our humanity will be more solid, and for this we have to act today. States have to implement significantly climate change and the protection of the environment, which requires resources, capacities, and necessary technology. But above all, it requires action and shared responsibility of states, the private sector, social and indigenous organizations have also necessary to work for this. We all have to protect the um, planet. 
It is only with a comprehensive approach to Mother Earth that we can comply with the obligations made in Agenda 2030 for sustainable development and the Paris Agreement. The Agenda of Addis Ababa and the numerous international instruments in the, for the environment and human rights based on the principle whereby all human beings have rights to a healthy, productive life in harmony with nature. Excellencies, friends, taking care of nature means taking care of people. We respect the vital cycles and we contribute for, so that the immense biological diversity of the world is maintained and will prosper. Let us take, our, take again our relationship with Mother Earth. Let us implement a vision of the world which is respectful of uh, her cultural heritage, our inheritance. As Albert Camus said, the true generosity for the future consists of giving it to the present. Thank you.